Hey, hey, hey! Welcome, guys, to the Muse of Maverick channel. I'm your host, Maverick. Today, we are starting a new series, which is Osanamiji ga zettai ni makenai labukame, right? Otherwise known as the love comedy where the childhood friend cannot lose, or as it's most commonly known, since that is such a mouthful, Osamake, right? That's how it's known in Japan, and that's how I'm going to be calling it from now on, because I ain't going through that entire, you know, long... Uh, light novel title sort of deal, right? So, anyways, uh, welcome guys, and I'm sure there are some new viewers here as well. Just to give a quick introduction of my channel, uh, typically I will have three different parts to my videos, and uh, I will have like an introduction or a recap at the very beginning. That the middle portion will be my blind reaction to the episode at hand, and then finally I will follow it up with a more I like to call amusings section, where I do a deeper dive to you know facilitate some discussion, uh, talk about some references made within the anime or you know whether or not you know the topics that are mentioned etc etc now granted this is more of a you know lo uh, romance and comedy series so we're not really get gonna get into in-depth discussions into like theories and and um, you know um, the philosophical uh, philosophical discussions and all that but still there's a lot to talk about right which i guess we should just go into right now because i definitely have a lot to talk about for this anime um but not actually particularly because of its original work but more so of the cast that it has indeed um no, I'm very familiar with, well, at least the female side of the cast here, and obviously, you know, we got uh, Sakura Ane, we got Minasa Inori, we got uh, Onishi Saori, who, by the way, is one of my favorite voice actresses, uh, and then also we got on the male side, you know, Matsuoka, and of course, uh, Nobunaga, right? Uh, Shimazaki Nobunaga. So, you know, just this, you know, just by their uh, resume itself, this is already really, really awesome, right? But, you know, there is actually so many layers to the relationship between these real-life seiyus uh, and, you know, how it reflects to as it is within the actual work, right? So let's talk about the female side of things first, because I am quite familiar with them. Uh, these, the, the three female seiyus here, you know, uh, Inori and Ayaneru and uh, Saori, they are great friends with each other. In fact, they actually have a sort of unofficial group together, uh, which is called Inori Kumaneru Onishi Saori, which is um, comprised of, you know, Inori, Minasa Inori, uh, Sakura Ayane, Kakuma Ai, and of course, uh, Onishi Saori. So these four are like a group here, right? And um, they are quite, quite close friends. Um, you know, Ayane and uh, Inori, they are like, you know, they, they call each other sisters, actually. And Inori and uh, Sari, these two are like BFFs. Uh, honestly, they are like completely inseparable. Like literally all, all of their um, vacations, they spend each other, spend with each other and all that. Um, and then, you know, uh, Ayane, Ayaneru and um, Saori, well, these two actually are, you know, they have quite the uh, interesting relationship with each other. Uh, I think one time somebody described it as a Spongebob and Patrick sort of relationship, which uh, isn't entirely right, but it kind of gets you into that uh, that mindset of, you know, they, they, they have different strengths and, and very different personalities, but, um, you know, they, they are quite the force to be reckoned with, right? And they have one of the most popular female seiyuu radios in recent years, Sakura Toshitai Onishi, which, of course, I am an avid listener of. And, um, well, anyways, these three are very, very familiar with each other. They're, they're great friends with each other, and so that actually just adds another layer to, to all of this, right? And then, of course, on the male side, well, we got Matsuoka and Nobunaga, and these two are, well, I guess... I don't know why. The reason why I call Nobunaga no, not by his not by his family, but just by Nobunaga, is because you know he is like he is so uh, in in my mind he is so much coupled with Matsuoka, and and Matsuoka always calls him Nobunaga, right? So it's like so like these two are so interconnected, right? And indeed, in a lot of the anime that they are in, one is usually the main character Matsuoka, and one is usually the main character's best friends Nobunaga, right? Which actually reflects in real life as well the rela the relationship between these two. So we got that side as well on the male side of things. However, 
However, beyond all that, obviously, since this is a rom-com, we also have the together version here, right? Which is, um, you know, the actual love interest and whatnot. Um, so one thing that's actually quite popular in a lot of seiyuu fandoms around the world is seiyuu pairings. Now, like it or not, you know, people are naturally... Uh, have a tendency towards celebrity gossip, right? Especially celebrities, you know, the, the relationship between celebrities. And well, you know, you know, you can like it, you can hate it, but I'm just, I'm just stating things as it is, right? So Matsuoka really, even you know, from from a from the actual anime work, right, the, the light novel work viewpoint, he, you know, his character obviously has a relationship with all these three main heroines, right? But even in real life, he actually is. Um, commonly shipped with uh, these three, in fact. Um, so, you know, obviously we have that entire, you know, Kayano Ai situation. Let's, let's, let's move that aside for now. She's not relevant in this one. But uh, Matsuoka with Sakura Ane, that this pairing might be one of the, um, you know, most uh, sought after pairing in the Chinese fandom, actually. Like, they love to put these two together. And, you know, they are, they are, they have quite the history between them as well, right? Um, they are of the same, uh, same talent agency, uh, I'm Enterprise. And then, of course, um, you know, you guys can, can look at a lot of, you know, various experts that they've done, um, throughout the years, right? It's it's always been a big point of debate what exactly is their relationship with each other. And they seem to act cold towards each other, but then every time they are together, they 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 act quite friendly towards each other and then always there's some, you know, there's some rumors and leaks about their uh, how they are actually quite good with each other privately. And so, you know, it, it's it's all all if you like gossip, it's definitely a great gossip topic, right? And then obviously Matsuoka in recent years he has been he has done a lot of you know main uh main male character main female character with Minasa Inori, uh which you know part of the reason of that is because these two are you know their respective tops you know top tier uh voice actors within their their respective genders here, but um. You know, it's it's also quite the common uh, pairing as well. It has a lot of people that that support this particular pairing, and so on and so forth. And then we also have the Matsuoka and uh, Saori sort of pairing here, which is honestly not quite as popular. It, it's had its time, I would say. It's It was quite popular a few more years back. Um, and the reason for this is because actually they are a senpai kohai um, in terms of a direct line, right? So uh, it's not just in a generic sense that, oh, because they're from the same agency and, um, you know, because one is more senior to the other, you know, that kind of senpai kohai. But actually uh, they are... Um, so Matsuoka was basically the one who, who, how can I say, who, um, taught over Sari, um, during her early years, right, as the senpai character here. So they, they go a long ways back. And in fact, in a lot of the, um, the anime that Sari is a main heroine in, well, Matsuoka is typically the main protagonist. So these two have obviously a history as well. And well... All I can say is, like, they... So, uh, in a sense, a lot of people were, were memeing that, you know, this entire anime adaption is a sort of a meme. The author is is basically memeing over this. And, to be honest, there is quite a lot of, um... You know, there, there is quite a lot of um, funny stuff that, that you can say correlates with this, right? For one thing... Uh, as far as I know, none of these say you uh, actually auditioned for the roles. Actually, the author just directly uh, decided that he wanted this this voice actor, this voice actress for this particular role, right? So it was basically a, a situation of the offer's choice and not through, you know, typical auditions, which is where a lot of the roles come from. So, um... You know that that already leads a lot of, of credibility towards hey the offer is trying to to basically write the story with a reference to certain people certain characters here right and it's further exemplified by the fact that none of these people uh well you know especially for the three heroines actually they don't typically voice the characters that they are voicing right now right for instance sakura Ane, the the character she's voicing is more of a cool beauty one which kind of fits into her 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 actual real life persona but it has a huge difference from her typical um uh, characters that she voices right which is more you know i like um you know 
you when you think of Sakurana, you think more of characters like um like Kokua from Gochi Usa, right? More like high pitched and um very very squeaky, noisy that kind of character, right? Um, in terms of and and so it, you really you can only look at the the actual character and, and how it looks like and see okay yeah I can see a match with with Sakurana here, and the same with Vanessa Inori as well. Obviously her her voice range is you know she she does a lot of voices, but um I do feel like just from a visual standpoint uh i i find that the character that she voices really fits her a lot as well and as far as i know the character that she's voicing is actually a little bit of a um um a scheming uh, a cute scheming girl right uh, uh there's a word for this in in japanese which is uh, uh what is it hara haragurui Haragului, right? Which is like I said, you know, it's it's basically sort of like scheming, but in a in a more cute kind of way, typically, right? So so you know, you have that kind of correlation as well. And the same for uh, Onishisari, right? She typically voices a lot of the cool beauty Ojo Sama kind of characters, right? Like uh, Majora McQueen, like Ice Valenstein. Um, but uh, here she's actually voicing a sort of you know, sister character, an Imoto character, which is more of a cutesy type, which she n literally never does outside of maybe Erudy from uh, Sinai but um, you know so with this it, it further lends credence to the uh, theory that the author is really styling these characters after the seiyus and basically he's memeing at this point here right so anyways uh, I've talked like a lint about a lot of this and um, you know but it's it's just I feel like it's important here because just the the actual you know the actual circumstances of this anime is quite peculiar and um a lot of people are really really uh invested into this not because they actually read the original series which again if you are someone who is a fan of the actual series and whatnot you know all the more power to you right and and i'm sure that it's a fine work as well i'm just saying that there's a lot of people who like me are watching this series purely because of the circumstances and the and the uh, actual people that are involved in it uh for better or worse right is it a good thing mm, perhaps not but um hey, it's it's entertainment right and what is anime there for but to entertain so anyways um okay i already talked 12 minutes about this and i haven't even gotten into the rest of the stuff right which is, i typically like to go through like I, what i call the fundamentals of the anime which is talking about you know the production studio the staff and so on and so forth um but, like, if I'm being honest here, there's not really too much to, to talk about here. Dogakobo, I'm not entirely sold on, you know, their credibility and whatnot. Like, sure, they are they are established and whatnot, right? But, uh, indeed, there has already been some, some concerns about how the animation is actually going to turn out, especially from the PV and whatnot. But, you know, I'm sure that's going to be more than acceptable, right? And, um, you know, I don't really have any specific comments in terms of director or sound director. So, at this point, I think I've said all that needs to be said. Um, you know, do let me know if you guys want to learn a little bit more about the fun facts about the actual seiyu behind the characters and whatnot because I do feel like that is a big part of what's driving this particular anime forward as well like people are already you know people are already saying that if they actually have any events for this particular like like in real life events for this stage events and whatnot for this anime it's probably going to be sold out instantly right so with all that being said okay let's finally get into the actual episode all right, let's begin in three, two, one, play. And by the way, I am, like I said at the beginning, I am going into this without really knowing anything about this particular anime. It's except, uh, you know, the references that I'm talking about. And, um, I mean, a general synopsis, right? Like, I know this is supposed to be the, uh, the, the first love, Hatsukoi, of the main character. It's voiced by, of course, <laughs> Sakurai I believe she's a writer. I 
I guess I should probably uh, also talk about the fact that I've heard this series is actually... Uh, yeah, she's a writer. I've heard this series, um, you know, the actual rom-com aspects of it go towards more like... Um, I've heard it's kind of like Kaguya-sama in a lot of ways where, you know, all the characters are actually scheming. Especially the heroines and whatnot. They're all scheming and trying to, to one-up each other. Alright, let's let me make sure that I'm recording and whatnot. I have to say though, it... hmm, the voice here. Like I like the voices of all these characters, right? But as I mentioned at the beginning, they are voicing characters where, you know, this is t not their, not their typical, uh, characters or pers or you know character range at the voice. Now, obviously, all three of th all all of them. Are able to uh, to to have a big range of voices, but this is not what they're most known for. Oh, so the good friend is actually a player, eh? I guess you were caught doing something. <laughs> uh, all I gotta say is, no matter how uh, trash you are, uh, there's always gonna be bound to someone who likes this kind of bad boy. It really is her. Oh, that's a classic 45 degree look. I'm sorry, but there's really no way I can't basically substitute the actual voice actors and actresses into the characters here. So the reason I was kind of cracking up at, at what Maru said there is because uh, Sakurayane is also quite well known within the industry as being quite hard to approach, actually. But uh, in reality, she always, you know, 
again because i listen to her radio and whatnot in reality she's always like she's actually quite the um how can i say it not quite klutzy but but she's definitely a lot more um cutesy and approachable than her demeanor would have others believe right Because a common problem, actually, which they talk about a lot in the in the radio show Sakura Toshitaonishi, is that a lot of kohai or or other you know other colleagues from the industry they want to get to to know Sakura in a better um, you know have a better relationship with her and whatnot. But most people are kind of unable to approach her just because of the aura that she gives off. <laughs> I'm guessing that's the childhood friend. Oh yeah, Kuroha. Oh, by the way, all of the three main heroines have a representative color, which is within their names. So, Kachi, which we've seen, is Shirokusa, which is white. Shiro, white. So this she that they're talking about, Kuroha. Has Kuro within her name, Black. And then the third heroine, which I don't, I think is not going to appear at least until like maybe five or six episodes. Momosaka, Maria, has the color Momo, of course. Yeah, see, Inari's voice fits this a lot. Oh, they're lolly. Like I said, there is definitely, there's a lot of mind game playing in this anime, uh, in this work. <laughs> oh my god, this is Inari's personality to a T. front of everyone, eh? Like I said, the sort of mischievous scheming type of personality here. Heartbroken. <laughs> Wait, 
Okay, and I guess right now is a good time to also talk about the, uh, the, you know, the title of this particular work, an anime. Well, actually, no. I'm not gonna spoil anything. All I can say is, all I'll say at this point is that, um, appearances can be deceiving. Settings can be deceiving. <laughs> Wow, this is a lot of development for like the first episode of a rom-com. I don't think you can really look at things like that. So, let's play make-believe lovers or something? So they are going to they should, She's definitely going to propose something like Let's pretend we're dating, right? <laughs> this character is definitely The defi walking definition of Harakuri I guess that's why she has Kuro within her name. <laughs> I definitely wasn't imagining a situation like this. Hey! Huh! Momosaka actually made a cameo appearance in this first episode. Huh! I believe that one is uh, Maria. Momosaka Maria.
Oh, I, I, Quite the petty character, isn't he, Maru? Yep. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> All according to plan. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> okay. You know, regardless of all the actual, like, real life stuff and whatnot, this is actually pretty hilarious. <laughs> in terms of the development. Huh. She's actually being quite upfront with all this. Wow. That is definitely something you don't see every day, right? development is this oh my god <laughs> okay someone barging in I give 10 more seconds until someone barges in Rejected just like that. Oh. 
Wow, this is some pretty fast development, actually. Yeah, his past. <laughs> yeah, I actually know about that, so not too surprised about all that. <laughs> Alright. Uh, and then we have the ending song, which... Uh... Or actually, is this the opening song? Okay, I think this is the uh, the opening song. Because the ending song was sung sung by uh, you know, these two characters. Yep, chance and revenge. <laughs> All right. Anyways, this is the first episode, so I will go through this at least this first time here. All right. See you guys after this. All right. That was a pretty damn entertaining first episode. Not gonna lie. And also, I am glad that uh, Zari actually made a cameo appearance uh, within this first episode, right? Which I actually wasn't expecting because, as far as I knew, her character does not appear until no, I think until like volume like actually I don't know, but but definitely not from the very beginning, right? Uh, and yet here we see um, you know we see her character Maria doing a little bit of a commercial and whatnot. Sure, it's only like two lines or whatnot, but hey, fun fact for you guys, uh, voice actors are paid by per episode basis, not by how many lines they read. So they get paid the same whether they read one line or they read a thousand lines. So cash it straight to the bank, baby. Uh, anyways, so putting that aside, um, I think I talked already at length in regards to, you know, the, the relationship with the real life characters a lot already within, you know, at the very beginning and also within the an the episode itself, right? Like definitely I was cracking up the whole time, especially with how they were describing um, Kachi's character. Right, uh, how you know how she has apparently this this sort of contrasting personality between how she's a cute, uh, cool beauty on the outside, and yet you know deep down she's a, a much more she has a much more different uh, sort of face to her um, instead, as well as how you know I can just picture uh, Mina Sayunori doing the same things or or saying the same the same words as. Um, as Shida was doing in this episode as well. So that was quite uh, funny as well <laughs> in regards to all that. Um, but anyways, it's I, I don't want to go too much at length here. I think I've said all that needs to be said. Uh, definitely, I feel like the characters fit their personalities, whether the voices fit or not. Um, in 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 Inori's case, I think it does, right? I think, you know, looking at the visuals, that is probably the type of voice that you picture for that. Kachi, we'll see, right? It's still kind of not entirely, you know, I still feel like there's sort of a dissonance, probably just because Sakurayane is so much more popular in all those other roles as well. So suddenly having her voice uh, matched with a character like this, you know, it's going to take some getting used to, right? Uh, same with Sari as well. But, you know, we'll, we'll see about that anyways. But, um, you know, putting all that aside and just looking at the anime as it is, 
I gotta say, it was it's actually a lot more entertaining than than I expected, right? And, and I was already expecting something where, uh, as I said, maybe similar to Kaguya-sama, where they're trying to one-up each other, playing mind games and whatnot. But the development and the speed of the development within this first episode definitely caught me off guard, right? Like, in, instantly in this first episode, you already know who likes who. Um, you know, a lot some of a lot of things have already been put out into the open, right? The fact that Shida actually does have feelings towards Maru and actually has confessed already, right? And, and now is actually actively actively scheming to to try and um, you know, to um to to get together with Maru uh using um basically I think the the tactic that she's trying to use here is, you know, once we once we play, once we make believe and whatnot, we pretend we're lovers, you know, maybe eventually it'll turn from fake love into actual real love, right? A la Nisekoi or something of that matter. Um, and then also, right, having this first episode and already talking about you know, having this confrontation with this Abe dude, right, this, this senpai. Um, and then with the senpai actually bringing out another part of Maru's character, which is that he used to be a child actor, right? Which, by the way, I, I do know already, again, not because I read the manga or the novel, but because actually before the, this anime aired, there was already three events already for Osamake. Um, one where they announced the anime, one and then two more, um, just, um, just like some, some advertisements for the actual anime, right? So, um, during their talks, I did already learn some stuff about the characters, including the fact that Maru is a child actor, right? And that's also what ties him with the third character, Momosaka Maria, and also, um, you know, potentially why the title, um, of this uh, of this particular work is kind of misleading, uh, or I guess the mis the actual misleading part is in the uh, the construction and context of the current characters here, right? So I do believe that there is something more to this entire thing. But anyways, uh, beyond all that, um, like. It's, it's hilarious, right? It's actually hilarious, uh, and it's made even better by the fact that I know who's behind these voices and I know the entire context of this particular work here. Uh, to me, it just adds even more enjoyment, right? But even if you take that out, I think it is also quite uh, entertaining of its own right as well. Now the animation definitely I feel like um, could be better. Like don't get me wrong, it's definitely serviceable, but also you can see the stiffness in the character movements, right? As well as the weird proportions sometimes in regards to faces. Especially this seems like a this seems like a series where it's going to rely on facial expressions a lot. Um, I mean to their credit, whenever they had close-ups and whatnot, they they did it um, they did it pretty decently. But uh, once you have like a, a more longer camera camera angle or something like that I think like the faces did sort of distort somewhat but you know not overtly so right and the same for the background art as well it's definitely you know I definitely feel like they could have put um you know Doakobo isn't exactly uh you know a a bad studio by any means in fact they are quite established and quite well reputed already it's just that I don't know I feel like the animation could still be better, but it's it's serviceable, right? It, it's serviceable. So that's the only, like, main negative I have to say for this first episode. The rest, you know, absolutely amazing and fantastic, and I love this development, and I am definitely wanting to see more, uh, irregardless of the characters. But because of the characters, uh, you know, you want to see it even more here. So anyways, that's it for this first episode, and hopefully this didn't come out as too rambly. Um, so uh, I think most of what I wanted to talk about, I already talked about in the intro, so I'm going to cut this one short. Um, you know, when the review and introduction is perhaps even longer than the actual anime, right? I, I actually, I think I it's not longer yet, but you know, I got to end now, otherwise it might be. So uh, in any case, thank you guys, and I will see you guys next time for some more Osamake goodness. Bye-bye.